What is going on guys? It is Aldo here at Zero to Mastery and today we are talking all about open source contributions. What exactly is an open source contribution? Well, a contribution according to Webster is the act of giving something or getting something given. Now, open source refers to an open source project, which is just source code that is available to the public. And if you didn't watch my GitHub tutorial, source code when you boil it down, it's really just files and folders with code inside of it. But if you didn't watch that, go watch that before I start crying on, on YouTube. It wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. Go watch that. Now, although this may seem difficult and complicated, it's really not that bad. But I do remember my first time making my first open source contribution, and I literally thought I was going to break everything. I thought the project was going to go down. I was even thinking about making a second GitHub account just so my name wouldn't be tied to it and make the contribution on that one so in case something broke it wasn't my fault but it's not that serious guys so today i'm going to walk you through exactly how to do it the steps that this entails and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be confident and ready to make more contributions all right guys so let's get into it first things first uh i would like you to go to the zero to mastery um uh, github account and then you're gonna look up the repository start here guidelines i'll link it down below so you guys just have quick and easy access to it uh, this guideline right here or this repository may i say is kind of like the entry repository so once we actually finish this tutorial you're going to be part of our community uh if you did this correctly which we're going to ensure that you do um you're going to be part of the community and you're going to be able to make other contributions on other open source projects we have so enough talking let's get into it so first things first now that we're in the repository and you're logged into your github account and you're on this repository we're going to fork it first if you look here though if you go to the readme if you go down it'll give you step-by-step -step instructions so we will actually follow this to the t to make sure that you guys see the same things that i'm seeing and you'll know where to go from here so step one is fork the repository we fork up here where it says fork and it has something that kind of resembles a fork and then it's going to make forking a repository just makes your own copy of that repository so you can do whatever you want to it and nothing will happen to the to the master or the original repository because this is your own copy so we're going to fork it first and you can name it whatever you'd like i'm going to keep start here guidelines and just make sure that you're logged on to the right one and then create fork and now that it's forked, you can tell that the repository has been forked. When you go up here, you'll see your username and then the repository name that you named it for the copy. Um, and then what you're going to do is go to code and you're going to copy this. So if you hit that on the right side, it should copy it for you. And you got to make sure that you're in your copy of it. You'll know by, by being able to see your username here and then the repository. And we're going to copy this. Go to the desktop and you're going to open up Visual Studio Code or your preferred code editor. And I'm going to open up a folder real quick to copy this into. I'll go into my development folder and I'll just put this in vanilla JS. That's fine. I'm going to create a new folder and we will call this. Uh, mer uh, let's call it test. Probably not the greatest folder name, but this is a test. OK. So now we're going to open up our terminal. And then what we want to do here is we're going to git clone. And then we're going to paste in what we copied. So this is going to paste in the, the, repo the, the actual repository itself, all the folders, all the files into our local. And then you're going to hit enter and it's going to clone it. It looks like it is done cloning. And now what we want to do, you see it up here, start here guidelines, but we're still in the main test folder. So we're going to LS, we're going to type in LS, and that's going to show us where we're at at the current moment, which is the test folder. But we do have the ability to go into start here guidelines. So we're going to CD into it. And now you see that we are in start here guidelines. If you go back to the instructions, oop, not there. All right. So we did this part, we code, we, we get cloned it, and now we CD'd into it. So that's all we've done so far. We forked it, we went to the code and copied and pasted it, and then we cloned it, 
and we seed it into it. That's all we've done so far. And now we can go into here and start seeing, we can start messing around with it, seeing what different folders we have. Uh, these are all the contributors. So this is where we're gonna put, or where you're gonna put your account. But this is, you can just mess around and look through this. Has different instructions. These are the, this is the readme instructions. Get started MD, bunch of different folders and files. But for the purpose of this video, we just need this contributors MD. So you're gonna go all the way down. Beautiful, looks like this is the last one. All right, and now what's the next step? So before you make any changes, keep your fork in sync to avoid merge conflicts. So this is important guys, because think about it this way. If someone adds their information on there and pushes it upstream and it gets merged and everything, and you have, let's say you haven't done yours, but you forked your copy. So you have your copy in your local, you don't have the new changes that have been made and this can cause merge conflicts. So we wanna to try to avoid that. So to avoid that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our upstream here and we're gonna pull the current changes. So we'll copy this and then we're gonna paste that. Oh, hold on. It copied both of them, one at a time. Okay, so now we have added our remote and then we're gonna git pull upstream master. Perfect, we're up to date, so everything looks good. We're checked out, everything is fine. Uh, from here, after adding the upstream and checking that all the files are up to date, which we have, now we will create a new branch. So now we're gonna create our, our, our local secondary branch. It's always great, it's a great custom to, or get accustomed to making another branch, don't work off the main, maybe a development branch or whatever you would like to call it. You always wanna to try to call it something similar to what you're doing. So if I was making a, like a particular update, uh, the branch might be related to that update. So I would name it something similar to that, uh, if that makes sense. And okay, let's do it. So we're gonna go and type in git checkout dash B and then just give it the name you would like. I'll call this dev. All right, and now we are on the dev branch. You can tell because it says dev here. The next step is git switch onto the, I mean, I'll do it, but we're already on there. Already on dev, beautiful. Okay, so that's done. That's already six steps done, guys. So shouldn't be too much longer here. Uh, on your computer, open up your text editor and add your name to the contributors.md file. Okay, so this is the contributors.md. And what we're gonna do is go to the next line or two lines and I'll put my GitHub. And then I need the link. So what I'll do is just open up another tab, go to my profile and I'll just copy this. Beautiful. And I'll kill this space here. Perfect. And now that you've added your, your username and then your GitHub link, that's all we needed to do there. So that step is done. Let's go back to the file or the readme MD. And then, okay, now we have to commit our changes and we're gonna push uh, to our branch and we'll go from there. Cool. So now what we wanna do is, I always like to do git status this will tell me kind of what needs to what needs to be added, what needs to be done. Um, so from here, we saw that we modified, we can see that we modified the contributors MD. So now we need to add it. What we'll do is git add and the dot to add all. Right now it's just one. That's why I also like doing the uh, git status because I could see everything that needs to be, um, or everything that's been modified. I'm not gonna do the git add and then the dot if I don't want certain things added as well. Um, so it's always good custom to do the git status in my opinion. Um, okay, now we do that, we can run another git status and you see that the contributors.md has been added. So now we're gonna commit and we will call this added my name. 
Perfect, that's been done. And then we are gonna go and push it. Git push origin dev. Beautiful. Now we go back. That's already been done. Step eight and step nine, done. Now 10, go to the GitHub pages of your fork and make a pull request. Okay, so go to GitHub page of your fork and make a pull request. Okay, so now we're up here. And you see up here that we have the, that it says that the dev branch has recent pushes less than a minute ago. We just made that push and it's already registering on the cloud. So now we're gonna compare and pull request. Looks like it's given us no problem. You always wanna double check uh, this top part here. This is my repository and it's merging into, or it's trying to merge into the zero to mastery start here guidelines repository. So the head repository, the main repository. Uh, you can leave a comment, so always good custom, good documentation when you're making any um, any contributions or anything like that. So I'll go, I added my GitHub account to join the ZTM, I can't spell, community, period. Beautiful, and then we're gonna create that PR request. This branch has no conflicts with the base branch. That's a good thing. And let's see what happens. So if we go back to our pull request, you can see that mine's not up here on the open. Why is that? It looks like all the open ones have conflicts, like there's a, a present conflict, right? Now, if we go to the closed, Look at that, mine merged already. So, and I have this confirmation from our bot that says um, it will now review and merge this request, but mine passed through, I guess, the preliminary check. And that's really it, guys. I hope this video was helpful and I hope you learned something from it. If you like this video, make sure to smash that like button and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you wanna see next. That's it for today and until next time.